In this video, I'm gonna show you three ways to make your own knobs, one of which is stronger than anything that you can buy. At the end of each method, I'll break down the pros and cons so you'll know exactly which one fits your project. Don't waste your money on store-bought knobs. We can make them better and cheaper. Let's get started. The first method we'll use is a square nut, and I love these because you can get them in almost any size, metric, imperial, fine, or coarse threads. All you need is a chisel and a drill bit that's roughly the width of the nut. This one's a 5 16 inch nut. Technically, it's just under 9 16 across, but I'm using a half inch bit, and that works just fine. I've got two pieces of stock here for a half lap style knob, and the nut will sit in one of them. A couple things we need to watch out for. Thickness. Your nut should be no more than about the third the thickness of your stock. So for three quarter inch material like this, a quarter inch or five sixteenths inch nut would be your best bet. Width, you want at least a quarter inch of wood on each side of the nut, so don't go smaller than the nut plus a half of an inch if you're using a five sixteenths inch nut. But if you can do it, try to do three times the width of the nut. This will make it strong even with soft woods. To get started with this, I'm gonna find the center of my block. The block is an inch and a half, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on three quarters of an inch, and that's gonna give me the exact center. I'll come in here to the very beginning of my stock, at zero and put a mark, and then I'll do the same thing at an inch and a half. And if I place this over the other one, that is gonna be spot on. Now I'll do the same thing with this block and go over to the table saw. Okay, now this is really easy. All we have to do is line up the tooth to the mark that we made like that, and I can make my cut. Oh, and I also did forget to mention that your blade needs to be exactly half the thickness of your stock, but I think that that's pretty obvious. Now with these cut, you can see why it's important to make sure that our nut is about a third the thickness of our stock. So now what I wanna do is I wanna find the center of my block. I'll just connect the diagonals on the outside like this and I'll use an awl to punch out the center. At the drill press here, I'm gonna use a 5 16 inch drill bit to drill the hole out, but I only wanna go down enough that my brad point bit pokes through the surface. Now I'll switch this out for my half inch drill bit. Now I'm gonna mark this the distance it needs to go for the nut to fit in. To finish this, I'll go back to my 5 16 drill bit. Now to make this a little bit easier on myself, I'm gonna use a hex bolt, and then I'll add my square nut to one side and cinch it down. I'll put the one half on top of the other half, and I can use my chisel to mark out the perimeter of that nut. With this cut out, I can add my nut. And it's below the surface, so that's good. Add a little bit of glue to this and then press it together. You might find that this is a little bit of a tight fit. Something that you can do is add it to a drill. Just move it back and forth a little bit so that it runs smooth. These are the strongest knobs you can make out of wood, at least in my opinion. Once that nut is glued in, it's rock solid, bomb proof. It's not going anywhere. The best part is there's no thread you can't create. Whatever bolt size your project needs, you can find a square nut for it. My 5 8 knobs for the quad vise were made this way, and I can put serious torque on that vise to clamp things down. And honestly, I don't think there's any other way to make a knob this strong without using the half lap method. That said, it's not the fastest build. You've got to cut a lap joint, chisel the pocket, do a glue up, and then wait for it to dry. And once that nut's in there, you're not getting it back out. It also takes a little more precision to lay out cleanly, and it's harder to batch out compared to something like an insert. But this is the knob you use when you need serious squeeze, when you're making a jigger fixture that has to hold. And honestly, these feel like premium knobs, the kind you'll actually be proud to make. Another way that I like to make knobs is with a threaded wood insert. If you're in a pinch and need to crank out a bunch of knobs, this is a fantastic choice. It's fast, repeatable, and clean. That said, there are three types I've run across and it's important to skip two of them, the barbed ones and the brass ones. 
the barb inserts need to be hammered in place, which means if they're ever bumped from the opposite side, they'll start to work themselves loose. Over time, trust me, they will pull out, especially in a knob where you're constantly loosening and tightening it. They just don't hold up. The brass ones have narrow, shallow threads because they're meant to be epoxied in, not screwed in. And epoxy, it takes time to cure, it's messy, and even then there's still chance that they fail. But the kind I use have aggressive self-tapping threads that bite into the wood and really grab on tight. They also have a small collar at the top and that works in our favor. It keeps the insert from sinking deeper into the knob and it really locks it down when you tighten it up. You're gonna need a drill bit that's just slightly smaller than the threads. And you're also gonna need one piece of stock. This is very simple, very easy, and it really won't take very long. I'm gonna use a knob for this, and I know that if, if, if you don't have a knob, you can't really do this. What I'm gonna do is just place this on here. I'm gonna add a smaller diameter through the center like this, and then just pull it straight out. Right there is where I'm gonna drill my hole. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I'll set my bit so that it just barely pokes out through the bottom, and we can drill this out. The threaded insert that I have uses an Allen wrench. Instead of using the, the Allen wrench that came with this, I've got an Allen wrench that's chucked up in my drill press, and I'm just gonna screw this in a little bit at a time. I'm just gonna twist it with my hand. Just like that. Now we're just about done. All we need to do now is cut some kind of handle out and then we will be finished. I've got a quarter inch bolt that I'm, I'm threading through it. So I've got my knob on there. I'm gonna come in here. I was using graphite, but I'm gonna to switch to my chalk pencil because it's kind of hard to see on this Paduk. These guys take hardly any time to put together. They're simple and it doesn't take long to make a bunch of knobs. Of the three knob types in this video, they're the only one that's easy to remove. So if you're making a temporary knob for a temporary jig or fixture, it's easy to break it down. Your nut sizes are going to be limited as the inserts serve more simpler purposes and knobs are kind of a DIY take with them. Unlike T-nuts, they will sit flush to the top of the surface. And look at that. They look so clean on the top. You won't need glue or epoxy like the other two, it's just a very simple method. Of the three, I could see some very small knobs being made with these as well. Having said that, I can't recommend making larger knobs with these, and I would be worried about using a heavy amount of torque with them. I think that as soon as this is against the object it locks to, more pressure might cause it to twist the nut. The whole size also needs to be just right, and if you fail at this with the wrong bit, you're not going to have a knob you can use. If you're going to use this type of connection, be absolutely sure you're using the thread cutting kind and skip the other two, as I mentioned earlier. A big thing to remember, when you thread these onto a bolt, make sure that the flange is on the opposite side of what you're clamping. So if I'm clamping something over here, the flange or the neck of this needs to be on this side, which is always gonna be on the opposite side. That way the pressure is placed on the collar of the insert, not just the threads. So if I did it backwards, we would be relying on just the threads inside of the wood. And this is gonna fail, I think, in time. The last method is the method that I've been using for many years now. In order to use this, we need to drill a hole out for that barrel size. One thing that you don't want to do is drill the barrel out and then just hammer this straight in. It's not gonna work. These times will just end up bending and the entire thing will be useless. So what we do instead is we drill out the barrel, we place this inside the hole, and then we tap it to know where to drill out those spines. Now with my T-nut in here, I'm gonna just tap it so I know where those splines are. I've already measured the splines on mine. They're about 3 seconds of an inch, which is about the diameter of a 60 nail. With the holes added, I can place this in here now and hammer this in place. And one thing that you can do if you don't want to use epoxy is to hammer it in and then just add one screw to one of the sides. This is an old trick that I learned from Matthias Wandel many, many years ago. But one thing that I don't like about this is that I'm drilling a, another hole in here next to a bunch of other holes. I, it's just a lot. I worry about it tearing out. I wanna mix up some epoxy and put a little bit on the barrel, the spines, as well as the underside of my T-nut. With the epoxy added, we can place it inside the hole and hammer it in. I'll give it some time to cure and we'll come back to this. T 
T-nuts used to be the only way I'd make a knob. Now they're my least favorite. Strength-wise, they're better than threaded inserts, mostly because of the epoxy, but there are just so many steps involved. Between layout, drilling, and cure time, I honestly think the threaded inserts are the better route for most people. Most jig fixtures don't need that much torque anyway. They're not hard to install, but they are fussy. Barrel diameters don't always match your drill bits perfectly, and if you go too wide, it's harder to cut the time pockets cleanly. One issue I've run into with smaller diameter T-nuts is breaking into the borehole while drilling for the tines. That can wreck the knob before you've even finished it. And just like with the last knob type, always make sure you thread it on with a metal flange facing the opposite direction from what you're clamping. One final thought, I didn't add a shaft to any of these knobs. As you can see from these, I've got this little shaft on the end of it. I've got one here, and what that does is allow you to direct the pressure more towards the object that you're clamping. With this being so wide, it can be more difficult to actually clamp it down and to release it. And having this little neck on the bottom side just kind of gives your fingers something that you can wrap your, your fingers around the bottom. If you want an easy way to make one, just use a hole saw, cut a small disc, and you've got the shape and the hole in one step. Afterwards, just glue one side of the disc, slide a bolt through it, thread it into the knob to clamp it tight while the glue sets. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found something in this video that can help you in your shop. If you found this helpful, please give me a subscribe, like the video, and thank my patrons that help keep all this going. And remember to keep making things.